attention to that. Hear that? That's the sound of a good watermelon. You know, whoever dropped this off, thank you, Muto Glacius. Um, ye shall be dubbed dinner. Oh, oh. come on, baby. Yeah. After that Indian food, though, I don't think that's going to go too well. <laughs> well, you guys started it. You're talking about Indian and India, and that brings up Indian food, and you know. <laughs> Hello, my dear ones. How are you? I did make it back after lunch, so we're going to do two videos today. It is good. Right? No worries. See? No worries. All right, let's keep on going with Q&A here because I know a lot of you need to get your questions answered, but I just want you to remember, remember in the last video, you pull back, you pull back. You can't get any further back to the wall than are you dealing with acid or base. You only have two sides of chemistry in this whole world, in this whole universe, in this whole galaxy, as far as we know. So you got two two sides, but du duality is that. Nate, creation is duality. So if you looked at creation as the general hospital or days of our lives or the soap operas, right? You use the mind to create your vision, your journey in one way. Think of thoughts as your imagination. And thoughts is how you create. It's also how you view creation duality. It's also realizing duality is then you have the lower part of the mind is called the causal mind. The lower part of your mind is called the causal mind. That's where duality is perceived in thought. Above that, your experience will be um, cosmic consciousness, Christ consciousness, the fifth plane consciousness, which some call it. Uh, a lot of names for the nirvana and ecstasy that one experiences when you get close to the mind because the closer to the high mind you get the closer to consciousness you get and you start to sense and, and feel the oneness of all life you start to feel that all life is springing from the same source and you're part of that and it's just a, a tremendous experience to have but it isn't you it is simply your playground. And if you want to expand that level of awareness, it is the Creator's playground. So, who does that make you? You know, if awareness is the Creator, see, it's hard to understand the formless being in form. It's when you have more out-of-body experiences and things like that, or you're living more in consciousness, that you realize and experience more the formless. So the 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 greater the the I don't even want to use the word higher. The the more you drop these limited bodies, just the greater and the more energy and the more awareness you have. It's it, it, it's not the obvious. You're not here to learn and grow and 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 find. No, you already know everything. No, this is only about the experience of it. And education and knowledge and, and expanding itself is part of that, of course. And bumping between duality and positive and negative, but that's the training of it all. So as you're trained in that way, you have to remember as you start to grow in your awareness, you start to kick back on your thoughts, kick back on your desires, it's going to attack you. Not, not the, the creator in its own way, but the negative forces are going to come after you because that's what keeps you here. So as you start to free yourself, it's going to try to continue to limit yourself. It's going to tease you. It's going to make you. It's going to give you experiences that either you let go, or it pulls you right into the experience, and you get emotionally and, and and mentally involved, and you're trapped again. Until you wake up and go, oh man, I got trapped again. Okay, all right, all right. Now, now, be here now, be here now. Live in the now, live in the moment. You have to find your ways to keep yourself stable in consciousness because the mind is so subtle, you'll sit there and think you're in the now and pretty soon you're chasing thoughts again. 
but it how it's how it ties your attention to creation to get out the opposite I've given you little tools to get out of creation if getting in creation is becoming creation then getting out of creation is becoming the divine itself simple it's like health simple but it's the but word I have a 24 year old female with acne on my face in fact we were just talking about some uh, friends from Canada and they were down about a year ago and this girl she's about 15 has been a year on raw I don't know if she's doing the herbs though but uh, she still has some on the face then it's like well this is why I love the botanicals because they're like <laughs> they're like vegetables with a twist and sometimes I like to say vegetables with an attitude even though the fruit kingdom, the berries, and if you'll notice in herbal lore, the berries are more for the endocrine glands and brain, the nervous systems, the endocrine glands. Interesting, huh? Interesting. Uh, one of the reasons is its nutritional makeup and its electrical makeup. Don't forget the electrical side of foods when you're talking about nutrition. Can't talk just about the chemical side. That's only half of it, or maybe less. You have to understand how chemistry got to be present. How, how, how did chemistry find itself in, in form and stuff? How did chemistry come to exist? And where did chemistry come from? Right? You do the same thing as I started to get back to the wall. You start tearing it down. You break everything down to the atoms. You know, all elements are is a bunch of atoms, right? So, depending upon the element, it depends on the amount of electrons orbiting around the protons and the amount of protons. That determines, remember, the electrons are the alkaline side, the protons are the acid side. So, the more electrons, the more alkaline base uh, metals that you deal with. The more protons, the more acidic it is. And ionization simply is that move of electrons between chemistries. You can call it a homeostatic thought, you can call it all kinds of things. But how did chemistry come into existence? So to answer that, again, you have to break it down. So we break down the atom, what do we get? We already busted the atom. Now, in one way of looking at it, the atom is comprised of light and sound. You know, in spirituality, you always hear, look to the light, look to the light. Ah, but the light is only half. This is duality. So with the light comes the music, comes the sound. Absolutely. Absolutely. You want to be innerly listening. To the music of God, or you could outer listen to the chatter of creation. Creation is like the jungle. Most people don't realize how loud jungles are. Well, creation is a loud place to be. So when we go into our caves, our man or woman caves, we look for the peace and the solitude and the silence so we can listen within. Now, the real test can you listen? and be in the middle of the noise. That's your test. Can you listen and be in the middle of the noise of creation? Can you observe and be in the middle of thought and creation? Fun stuff. Very opening and elevating stuff. So chemistry, when you break it down to the subatomic part particles of electrons and protons, and then you break them down, you get start getting into the nano levels, but when you finally break it all down, what do you get? Energy. Energy can be considered thought. Wait a minute, something has to have the thought, right? All right. Twenty-year-old female with acne on the face, back and shoulders. My skin was clear before I went on the birth control pill at age seventeen. A little acid get you? Yeah, it's interesting too because remember estrogens. Uh, if any of you guys find the pH of estrogen, would you let me know? I can't find it anywhere. And uh, if you don't understand pHs, how do you understand the effect of things? So anyway, the pH is acidic, of course, but not overly acidic. You know, it's not like 
metabolites or metabolitic wastes, which are more like phosphoric acid, carbonic acid, things like that. These are about 3 pH. Same thing as soda pop. Phosphoric acid, carbonic, same thing. 3 pH. So when you have arthritis, fibromyalgia, systemic acidosis. What do you feel? Ah, 3 pH pain. You're feeling soda pop stuck in around your cells. Exactly what it is. Acid stuck around the cells. Where do they come from? The cells doo-doo. For you young children, we'll call it doo-doo. And that's what you see. You see it in every event, every symptom that exists. Very few symptoms, and there are symptoms of alkalosis. You know, like dizziness, vertigo, out of balance, things like that. Could go into convulsions, I suppose. But uh, acidosis is far more um, destructive and deadly because it's easy to get out of alkalosis. Not so easy to get out of systemic acidosis. You know, when you realize that the acid ash foods that man's been eating, these acids, right? Those acids blow back on the colon wall, the small intestinal wall, and work their way through the kidneys and damage the kidneys. And this World Health Organization has talked about this a little bit. In terms of, of studies and relationships to these types of diets related to cancers of these tissues. And simply put, if you're leaving acid ash in your blood or lymph, your body's got to deal with it. And the word that you use when the body has to deal with that is called inflammation. It, it, it is inflammation is your natural body's immune response to the foreign, foreign chemistry don't want you in here. You can damage me. Get out. It's an inflammatory response. Bringing in more blood, bringing in more immune cells, but also bringing in more lymph. Opening up the lymph vessels, opening up the lymph nodes, because here comes some trash, maybe. And if that system is shut down, how do you get rid of your trash from the cells? How do you get rid of brain trash when the kidneys aren't filtering, oh, I guess they can wiggle out the ears. <laughs> no. I think it was the U University of West Virginia said something to the effect that when they discovered the lymph system in the brain, it was a shock because they thought that the body got rid of the metabolitic waste esoterically. That's a word we would use in spirituality would be maybe esoteric, you know, something like that. Now, so what I'm getting at here is that estrogen is acidic. So if you're already backed up lymphatically, more acid does what to you? Just what you see, right? That's exactly what it is. You can tell what it is, exactly what it does. Now, what uh, imagine estrogen adding estrogen to a system that is backed up lymphatically. Now you see more acidosis. You see the body going into an elimination mode through the skin now because the kidneys are shut down, filtering-wise. Right? So you've got the skin making up for this, but there's nowhere for any of this to get out. So then as wastes accumulate, like the Go to New York when they had the uh, sanitation strikes. What builds up on the curbs of the city? Trash? All right, in your body, that's called tumors, uh, lip node swelling, and cysts, boils, pimples, and the, and, and the like. That's what that is. And it's simply trash from the cells that can't be carried away lymphatically, can't be eliminated. That's why the first order of business in detoxification go after the eliminative organs. Colon, kidneys, skin. Always go after the eliminative organs. Get them eliminated. If you don't know the kidneys need to filter, that's a problem. That's where we have it on this world. You need to let the world know that kidneys need to filter. Sewage in, in kidneys is not infection. It's proper elimination. And we all know medical doctors have killed, killed, and killed over this. And we just had one of our, our guys killed over it. Because they thought... He had a massive infection because he was massively filtering. Oh, even his wife knew. 
And it just, when these cases come up, I, I don't know how I can remain, sometimes remain civil. Thank you for giving me the mindset. Thank you. Because it's just, it's horrible. And over a stupid thing like that, you know. So remember that when you get that way, then they give you chemo. So estrogen has an acid value of probably 5. I'm going to guess. 5, 4.7 to 5. How about chemotherapy? Well, most of the newer stuff, I'll give that to them, is closer to 2. Closer to hydrochloric acid. Okay, so hydrochloric acid. Why do we use hydrochloric acid if we eat a piece of meat? And what is a piece of meat? Cells, right? And so hydrochloric acid breaks apart what? Tissue, right? Yeah, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. So, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> now we're giving our patients hydrochloric acid with a twist, and they're already burning up with acidosis. So seeing what a little estrogen can do, what happens with chemo? It is the biggest crime committed under the nose of humans ever perpetrated by man. One of the biggest crimes this side of vaccines. Biggest crimes. Might shock some of you. Biggest crimes. Do your research. We have a world of sweet kids and now older people, ADD, ADHD, all because somehow they didn't understand health and vaccines, toxic vaccines, were somehow building immunity. Interesting. How those who have been vaccinated from these problems still get them, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's amazing, amazing the stupidity there. So understand that. That at age 17, honey, you're 24 now, I can tell you without even guessing, you've got kidney and adrenal gland issues. And, 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 but it comes, it almost comes standard issue. You go into the physical world, oh, physical body, here's kidney weakness and adrenals. Oh, you too? Kidney weakness and adrenals. I mean, it's, it's that bad. And you guys, we, our generations and the, and the ones before us and the ones after it has wrecked. Uh, the health of man through the stupidity and the diets. You cannot consume acid ash foods and not break down the tissue of the eliminative organs. And that's just what these types of foods break down the eliminative organs. Once you get healthy and you get back to the raw and you get healthy again, go back on these foods and I'll show you what happens. Just try those foods back again, show you what happens. You can test it on yourself. You don't need any, anybody to do a double-blind study. Also have very thin hair. I remember we talked about that on the last video. And this is, this is something that's even, you know, this, this brings up, and this is serious stuff. Even though I'm sure some of you don't think, well, I've got really thin hair. Yeah, but what does that mean? I'm actually happy my hair's thinning <laughs> because I've always had thick, thick hair. You know, it's like, oh, thick hair. But all I can say is that when you start to lose hair, what side of, I always ask this question, which side of chemistry is taking it off, right? All right, think of chemotherapy, acid, all right, now which system deals with acid, right? Okay, same thing. All right, tie that to what's causing all the pimples, the acne or the eczema or whatever you want to call it. Is there a relationship? Absolutely. Same system. Same system. See, when you start realizing this system deals with the acid side of chemistry and you stagnate that system, then you've got stagnation of acids in the body and they're corrosive. That would be like holding a big sip of Coke in your mouth with no neutralizing ability whatsoever. So that acid just keep coming back and giving its love to you. Burn, baby, burn. Oh, oh, it's cleaning my teeth. Oh, yeah, it's pulling the cat. Oh, my God. Acids. Be aware. Very aware of those signs. I also have very thin hair. Both my parents have thick hair, so it's not genetic. Uh -uh. So what does that mean? It is body systemic. What's in your body causing thin hair? Now, you could argue that maybe you have a pituitary, maybe, and maybe that in some way affected uh, hair follicle growth, maybe, but not what I see. But again, 
where would you find the answers to this one? The iris. Get used to playing with this because your world of the physical body is seen through the eye. And that show I can tell you what's causing it, but I can't tell you the degree that you're involved because I, no one knows except the eyes. The eyes have it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for such a beautiful science. My menstrual cycle is short and very painful. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking pituitary here, pulling me back in. Thin hair. Remember here? Remember the frontal lobe here? We were just talking about in the last video. The guy losing hair here. And, got, and some of the symptoms he had was probably pituitary. Absolutely. So, real strong possibility here. Remember, when the pituitary goes, your monthly cycles go. They either get too, they either quit or get too aggressive and uh, painful and that sort of thing. Cramping, and you, you also see this, I might add, I've noticed this with thyroid and parathyroid weakness as well, ladies. So be careful with the parathyroid weakness and over cramping and things like this. Uh, that might be a warning sign that, uh, you know, things are coming like postpartum depressions and things like that if you don't fix this. Osteoporosis, osteopenia, things like that. I was put on psych meds against my will from age 7 to 15, including uh, Topamax, Lithium, So you never want to get mad at me for bashing on the medical doctors when these guys have been doing this for so many years and they're not learning. They're not growing. I, I get sometimes we we go through levels. I did. I got out of school. I didn't know you don't learn stuff like this in school. Are you kidding me? This is 50 years of working with people. You don't learn stuff like this in school. You will in our school. When we get our naturopathic school up and running, you're going to learn all of this. So when you get when you graduate, you're going to be able to sit down and talk with your clients. Matter of fact, when you get down to our school, you've already had mock appointments. So you're going to be able to sit down and know and articulate exactly what their problem is and how to fix them. As opposed to, well, I'll we'll give you some vitamins and uh, here, I'll go on a high-protein diet. and uh, Here, let, let me follow the butts of the medical doctors, <laughs> naturopaths, right? Yeah. Well, all I got to say is upper circuit and brain and nerve, sweetheart. Get yourself on upper circulation and brain and nerve. You will love what it's going to do for you with that. All right. Go after the kidneys. Go after your adrenal glands. Go after the endocrine glands. Go after the GI tract. Go after these systems, particularly the lymphatic system. Get your kidneys to filter. Must do. If you're having any type of emotional issues, use flower essences to help you to stay stable that way. Not your antidepressants and, and, and uh, anxieties. I was obese during this time. Aha! Uh -huh. So that takes me back to the adrenals again. Okay, so most of it, we, we, we blame obesity on the thyroid, right? Slowing down metabolism. Eh, eh, I mean, yeah. But adrenals, number one, uno. What if you have both down? Big boys and girls. Big, 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 big. I was obese during this time and consumed a diet of mostly fried and processed meat. After getting myself off them, there goes the kidneys. After drugs, I lost 100 pounds. Now, yeah, this lady is doing it, baby. That's good. Congratulations, sweetheart. Become anorexic and lost my menstrual cycle for three years. <laughs> well, this is the time for you to stabilize. You want to stabilize yourself. And get yourself into proper thinking. The problem with that is when you have weaknesses in the endocrine gland system, it warps your thinking. It depresses you. It brings thoughts. It brings negativity. You know, a lot of things come with the acid side of life. That is the negative side of life. And it's very disruptive and there's all kinds of things on that side of life, as most of you know. So, you have to grab a power that's beyond your body's ability to affect you. Beyond your gland's ability to affect you. Beyond your mind's ability to affect you. Beyond your emotional ability to affect you. You must become the power itself, the consciousness itself. And that will bring stabilization. If you play with the mind, it is subject to the endocrine gland health. 
If you play with the emotions, it is subject to the endocrine gland health. If you play in the physical body, very subjected to endocrine gland health. So if you want to play in these fields of dreams, then you must make healthy that which is your instruments of joy and happiness, your bodies. Because unhealthy bodies polarizes you to the negative side of life, negative thoughts, negative feelings, etc., etc., etc. And when you're eating dead animal tissue and proteins and acids, it's pulling you to the negative side of life. It's sucking the energy out of you, the calcium and electrolytes out of you, dehydrating you, dying you up, and it'll eventually take your body back into the fetal position. So, you want to empower, enleaven, and enlighten yourself. Let go of the old ways of thinking and propaganda. There's so much lies and crap on the internet and propaganda from the Dairyman's Association and the Cattlemen's Association. You name it. They're going to tell you, eat more beef. Thank God Oprah won her case. Free speech. Today I am a healthy weight, 130 pounds, 5 foot. Whoa, whoa, she gave away. She gave it away. 5 foot 3. In a human, is short. So, I can tell you unequivocally, sweetie, you have a pituitary weakness. So now you want to pay attention to that. You didn't hear you thinning up here. Got to drain the sinuses, get all this fixed up. To get that accomplished, clean up the GI tract, get the kidneys to filter, start opening all your doors, get yourself sweating, right? You know, look to these, the video on protocols because I give everybody their own protocols. That wouldn't be right either. I'm here to answer your questions. What's up? What you got to do? Protocols, you know you're going after kidneys, you're going after your drill. That's why we have these classes. Matter of fact, when you guys hit the class, have your shoes on. We got some ground to cover. But this is what we do in our classes. And particularly this 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 new level two. This is gonna be only what we deal with pretty much. It's how you do it and how you make it through some of these tough cases, you know, and things like this, because there's some real tough cases out there. And the re genetics and the degree of limb stagnation up into the chronic levels, I'm telling you, the mix isn't good, not for humans or anything, really. In, in any other form of life, and you see it in humans, mutation is, is assured. And you see that in the human cell. So, I can just tell you right now, five foot three pituitary, pituitary, pituitary. So, I want you to think about parathyroid too, because you're a young woman, you might not have babies. You do not want to have postpartum depression, depression. You don't want your babies to not develop properly skeletally, and you don't want to lose your teeth and your bones. I'm dead serious. It's not good when a woman has a baby and she has a parathyroid weakness. Nothing good ever comes of that. Think of Andrea Yates. If she ever gets out, she drowned, remember that? She drowned five of her babies several years ago. I'll never forget her. If you can see parathyroid by looking at it, you guys could have diagnosed her easy. So they have her on antidepressants, of course, but she's gaunt, she's wrinkled really bad. You can tell. Five babies took all her calcium out. Her teeth are just almost none. So immediately you know what took place. So instead of helping these people, we throw them in jail. That's, the, that's, that, that's man's way. His ignorance uh, precedes him. Humans. But still have the issues I mentioned because you got to get in and fix yourself, honey. Till you get your lymph system filtering and you get everything hydrated and moving and get these acids out, can your body rebuild itself? Remember this. You cannot rebuild tissue in a corrosive medium. Acids are a medium of catabolic or cationic issues. You can't regenerate in that, that menstruum. That, that's a medium of, of, of first ripping and then agglomulation. That's that, that. So you, to rebuild, get new hair, get all of this, you've got to get to that medium. You've got to get that system opened up and hydrated. And as that happens, the body loves to rebuild itself. It's the natural instinct. And of course, the consciousness of the foods are into that process as well. 
consciousness of the herbs. What do you think they're for? To help the tissues structure function. And that's just what they do. They can strengthen and enhance the performance of the cells. Beautiful stuff. Just beautiful worlds here. The man chooses to not look at that. Uh, uh, but still have the same image. Nothing very serious. Oh yeah, you do. Oh yeah, you do, sweetie. This is very serious. This is very serious because with the parrot, with the pituitary down, you're only five foot three. So your children are either going to go way up or even down. These are you got to really look at this. And of course, the pituitary controls all the other glands, including the thymus, which is another growth factor and immune factor. So a lot of things can take place under this guy that you're involved in right now. So many things can happen here. It's not even funny, and they'll all think it's all different. Uh, but I'd like to take charge of my health. Good woman. Uh, while I still have youth on my side, good woman, before having, thank you God, before having children, smart spiritual woman right here, and before it gets more serious, I have many fruits, but am responsible for cooking for the others in my, oh yeah, see that, there's the burden of the female, because generally they're the cooks of the family, they got to cook for everybody, and then try to do good on themselves. I know, that's why you females deserve a lot of kudos, man, I mean, you take care of everybody. And a lot of women don't take care of themselves. And remember, put the oxygen on the mama first. She's the boss. And then everybody else. Let me tell you, everybody looks to mama. So you ladies, you know. So I indulge in other foods with them too. I know I indulge some Indian food today. But I was just reading from an Indian man. And you know, when you say Indian, Indian, that gets me going. I haven't had Indian in quite a while. But I thought, well... I gotta have it now. Is my health situation dire enough to require a fruit diet to see improvement? Not only that, but you really want to get on some herbs and stuff, and, and maybe even some granulars. I, <coughs> you're headed for a very low blood pressure, all kinds of things, all kinds of things. And for you, you uh, mamas with babies, if you got a baby wetting the bed all the way up to seven, eight, nine, ten years old, what's doing it? Pituitary. Remember that pituitary controls so many things, bedwetting, all kinds of things. I am willing if that's the case. I'm also wondering if you'll see scars, stretch marks, and vision. Oh, absolutely, all these things. Absolutely, 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 absolutely. Stretch marks, interesting too. But uh, scars for sure. All right. All right, so let's look at this one. This is a good question. I just read the top of it. My question was... You mean is, right? My question is... Is it safe for a person to take upper circulation immediately after having a stroke with bleeding in the brain and when the parathyroid is low, hence the weak connective tissue? I would say most definitely. I would do this. All right, there's a formula that I made called bleeding. That's a hemostatic, all right, that stops internal bleeding, right? And, and what you're saying, his capillaries are probably oozing, right? Especially with the parathyroid. Good catch on this. Whoever's doing good question, all right? So, I would definitely use upper circuit, but I'm going to use the bleeding formula. At the same time, I'm going to go right after that parathyroid gland, and I'm also going to give them the bones formula. Um, probably about three, three times, or four, uh, three times a day. Why? Because those are tissue accelerators. They accelerate healing. Any tonic will accelerate healing, but these particular uh, comfrey and golden seal, they accelerate the healing of tissue. And so this would be very important, high in calcium and stuff like that. So I'd be tripping off the parathyroid, making sure there isn't a pituitary involvement, because I'd be going after that as well. I'm going after upper circuit, and I'm going after brain and nerve though as well. Because with a stroke, you already damaged the neurons. So I'm going after upper circuit, brain nerve. I probably am going after lower circuit, but I'm going to put the bleeding formula. I'm going to use the bleeding formula to try to stop bleeding, of course. <coughs> if he's really bleeding bad, I can't imagine him being alive. I mean, I, I, I mean, if he's having some bleeding, you use that. I can't believe they don't have a hemostatic formula. This is a good formula to stop internal bleeding while you're repairing and building. See, there's neat things you can do with botanicals. I don't know about them. The connective tissue, if there is some oozing and capillary, you know, breaking that, go after that parathyroid. But think about the bones forming when you add that with that. 
Uh, wouldn't a heavy flow of blood in the capillary cause them to break and hemorrhage more? It could, but I want to tell you something. There's something neat about these formulas and circulation formulas as well. There's also strengtheners. There's vascular wall strengtheners in these formulas. And that's another thing you want to think about. It isn't just a, a, an aggressive move. That's what's neat about the botanicals. And of course on a fruit and berry diet, because that's exactly the only food you want this person on, any post-stroke, heart attack, <laughs> only fruit, only, only, only fruit or berries, period. End of story. Nothing else, let me tell you. Upper circ and brain and nerve. Now if you're worried about that, hold off the upper circ for a little while or do a small dosage of it. The real issue is the lymph system in the brain. That's why the stroke, all right? Not the blood. Blood was the victim of that. So go back to the wall again, right? And, and so the blood is a victim of the lymphatic system. That's the system you have to honk on. Get the kidneys filtering, get that, and try to get some sinus drain, try to get some drainage out of here, which will reduce the swelling, reduce the acidosis. Because remember, you're trying to deal with this in the menstruum of acidosis, even though the juice flowing through the vascular is alkaline. Because if your blood becomes acidic, we all know the end story of that one. So you see what's going on here? Absolutely. And that uh, tuna, that uh, trunk, that, that, that has to be alkaline. So if you're eating an acid ash diet, where do you get your electrolytes? Where do you bring the alkalinity into your body? You don't. Your body, is, your, your body steals it out of itself to try to bring some semblance of balance. And because it can ravish itself, we have lipids. Oh, lipids, cholesterol. Yeah, we can save some uh, ravishing of chemistry. We'll just use some cholesterol. Yeah, <laughs> got that acid. There's another one. Yeah, got that. Or there's one way to know. Something has to try and stop acids, right? Because if you don't stop an acid, what's the end result? Well, think of death and, and modulation and what happens. Look at the body farm up there when they showed that in Casey Anthony's trial and that. Think of the body farm where they get all the body, dead bodies lying around in there investigating. Extremely acidic. That's what breaks things back down. First life and death, remember? Shouldn't the person work first on the parathyroid connective tissue with the bone and connective tissue formulas? Same time. Same time. Matter of fact, post strokes and uh, I had a triple stroke case once. Triple strokes. Bam, bam, bam. They told his wife to, to go make funeral arrangements. Well, this lady is an old black nurse. And, of course, a lot of the blacks love herbs because they're islanders. These people know what's up. They don't jump in pharmaceuticals like Americans and some of the people that, you know, are not raised in the islands. They're raised around botanicals and fruit and things. So these guys, you know, like I said, I've had islanders in here 102 years old. I mean, the islanders have the opportunity to be the giants of the world. But uh, I forget where I was going with that. But you want to work on everything simultaneously. You want the fruit diet immediately. You want the, the, the fruit and berry and melon diet immediately. And the, if you could get the upper circ, but again, if you use the, the hemostatic, the bleeding formula, it should help you with that. And then you have the flavonoid complex within the herbs and berries in the circulation formula will help to strengthen. And the, herb, and the flavonoid complex in the fruits and berries will help to strengthen the vascular walls. Very important. It's where the vitamin C is a spinoff from. But it is the flavonoid complex. And uh, yeah, that's why we go for these things like that. Uh, but an excellent question. I would be very, yeah, that way too. So I definitely try the hemostatic, probably half a dosage for a while, see how we're going. Uh, he's medically being checked, right? Then, since it gets worse before it something gets better, isn't this risky for the brain capillary, which are already weakened? Uh -uh. How do you strengthen? See, if you, if you work with that type of philosophy, wait and see. Then the patient will die or end up with, you know, some considerable nerve damage, which you can rebuild, but eh, what's going to rebuild them? What are we waiting for? Uh, how's it going to rebuild the capillary bed if you can't remove what broke it down? See where I'm going? 
Well, we'll just wait till the no. The body can't do it. In, a, in an acidic medium, the body can't do it. The body's in a defense mechanism against acidosis, let alone trying to rebuild itself. That just doesn't happen. You don't have the chemistry to do that. The chemistry's shifted to survival, and that's the problem. So we're shifting you back into the proper chemistry balance, and therefore regeneration takes place. It's a natural phenomenon. But this is this is you never want to wait on any case. You might slow up on some cases. I agree. You might go slow at first on some things. Tumor in the brain, upper circuit wouldn't be smart. I agree with some of that. But we're talking about stroke and heart attacks, very serious stuff, you know. I anyway, triple strokes, that's what it was. So she was, she became a friend. This 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 black nurse became a friend. And so she called me up. She says, My husband just had to, and I knew him too. And they said, my husband just had triple strokes. I said, triple strokes? She said, I said, oh, crap. So she said, they want me to make funeral arrangements. He's still in the hospital. Will he come down and, and visit us? And I said, sure. So I went down and I visited him, right? So their medical doctor came in and looked at me. And he said, what are you, real rude. What are you doing in here? I said, a friend of the family. <laughs> so I looked at him and I said, get him, get a feeding tube in him and get him home. And that's just what we did. We put a feeding tube in him and got him home. All right. So we put him on fruit. All right. So he's getting better and better. But he still has a lot of mucus, too much mucus. And I'm going, you know, honey, there, there's too much mucus here. Let me ask you something. Did they send you home with a little box of insure? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been given. What? So, thank God, I caught that off real quick, because that is sure crap. These people ought to be sued for lying. Just the worst crap on the world, right? I mean, high protein, mother's milk. This is what humans need, high protein, is it? Is it insure? Three months. Three months. Sitting up, counting his A, B, C's. Okay? So... You never count out anybody, never, until they say, I got to go. So I'm, I, I wouldn't stop at this one, uh, uh, not for one bit. And if you worry about the bleeding, then maybe you can find a, a medical doctor that can work and do some scans while we're doing this. But boy, that's, you got you to do that. But what's nice is you can stop the bleeding with the hemostat. Another note, last night I had several... Uh, Swellings, almost like something of the esophagus and, and, and lungs. Out of the blue, I am still detoxing. Is that swellings? Is that what you're trying to say? Swellings? Up and down? Well, very possible. You know, when you start detoxifying and you're, you're actually going in and around all the cells is where you're getting. You're actually going through with chemistry and getting around all the cells of your body, bringing in hydrated electrical chemistry. Here, we're the good guy. We're coming. We're coming. And then the blood comes in around the cells and begins that hydration of the interstitial fluid on that part as well. At the same time, you're going after those kidneys which filter this system. Right? You're going after the adrenals, which control the kidneys. So you're going after all that, balancing out the sodium potassium pumps. You're doing all that. You don't even have to think about it. The body's going to do it on its own because you're eating balanced chemistry. You're eating the chemistry designed for the homo sapien body and nervous system, I might add. Got to remember that. The power of the, of the human nervous system is not like that of the other, other entities or creatures on the planet. Our, uh, the human being has a high electrical uh, need, and that need is only found in fruits and berries. That's why we're not have four legs and multiple stomachs and all this other kind of stuff. Now, so you can see swellings like this. I mean, in detox, I can't imagine what symptom could not happen. To be honest with you, I'll tell you this. Every symptom that mimics a disease will happen. If you've ever had anything like that, whatever symptoms you've had in the past, sit back and relax. You're about to have them again. If you had uh, bronchitis, for an example, and you never let it run its course, hang tight because you'll probably have it again. Pneumonia the same way. You have to allow the body to detoxify itself. That's all these symptoms are, is symptoms of detoxification. You put the chemistry in that created the immune response, 
called mucus. And so now you got to get all that friggin mucus out and it is not fun. That's for sure. Oh, all right. So here we go. Uh, I'm still in and at one moment had no more air passing to the brain. Holy crap. Felt weak and my head was cramping. You know what? I would be on upper and lower circulations for sure. Even though we're talking about the blood, I would definitely want to be on two kidney formulas at all times. I would also be on one lymphatic formula at the very least. You might want to do a liquid one. You know, a matter of fact, if your liver's in pretty good shape, do liquid number five. That is your big boys. And that's, uh, you know, you want to start drawing and pulling. If you can, get yourself on a dry fast or something, it might be helpful. But if you can get yourself to <coughs> start spitting up and breaking up this mucus in here, it'll break up the mucus in the esophagus, in the voice box, in the larynx. It'll, it'll break up all this for yourself. And then, <coughs> that'll come out. The swellings will go down. The throat will open up bigger and you're in good shape. But you have to get the body into that detoxification mode of spitting out mucus. Well, the only the only side of chemistry that happens on is the alkaline side. Now, the acid side causes it. So you can eat acid like eating too hot a pepper. And you get the mucus out. The problem is when you can't get the mucus out, it builds up. Like when you take a, a, a drink of milk or a glass of milk, not only does your lungs fill up with mucus, your sinuses fill up with mucus. You can feel it all, all in your body, just like it's like your whole body had immune response. Oh, and it takes a lot to get it out. But get it out, you gotta. Uh, I didn't sleep all night and last night as well. I have a nodule on the thyroid as well. That'll come out, but that's the sort of thing. You know, you have swellings all over the place. And this is just lymph stagnation. That's, and that you're just going through unwinding that. So don't panic too much, but I don't like the throat closing too much either. That's not fun. So I'm trying to think how to avoid that for you. Felt like in a shock. Freezing, trembling, heart palpitation, weakness, and pale skin. Well, wow. yeah, you were, you were detoxing something. Probably the thyroid gland. You were detoxing one of the glands or something, or the stomach. I felt like a, a, a bump in the, in the throat. Is that supposed to be throat? I felt like a bump in the throat, esophagus, and couldn't swell for hours. I noticed both times it started in the evening. I guess when the body's cleaning the most, I am guessing, after my iris photo too, I have neural toxins coming out of the brain, cerebellum. Wow. When swelling, I took immediately some lemon juice and the pressure in the thought released. There you go. That's a, that's a smart idea. Watermelon, anything like that. Anything that's not mu You would never want to do what? Anything that's mucus for me, you'll just make more pressure, more swelling. So you want to take things that reduce that, and that's going to be your alkaline chemistry. That's going to be your fruits, berries, and melons. Then you're just showing it this. But I was coming back, so I did this several times during the whole night. I read somewhere that lemon juice acts like a cortisol and reduces inflammation. I think anything with flavonoids, any of your fruit and berries, high in flavonoids has a similar reaction like that. Oh, man, you're going through it. I tell you what, some of this isn't fun, guys. And I, I'm, not, I'm the first to admit that some of this is not fun, And you, but there's nothing else out there. And I, listen, I've had a lot of years to try to make it better for you. Let me tell you, in the earlier days, it was a lot more difficult. My phone would ring all night long, or my beeper. It just, you know, I learned. And you know what I learned? Kidney filtration, essential of removing systemic pressures. If you back up, remember, there's blood pressures. Oh, oh. But there's, wait for it, lymph pressures. And those are pressures that no one can do anything about. You have to hydrate, get the kidneys to filter, skin to sweat. And that's scary because that's when the head starts swelling and pressure. You just you don't know what to do with it. You can't get rid of it. Some people want to kill themselves. I can't even tell you 
Remember I told you that guy, I'm giving a lecture at a church, big church. This guy comes, I've seen him come in the back doors, comes walking up the aisle, right on up to me, you know, and I wasn't sure, you know, I can get my gun or what's going on. He said, I, you know, I, 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 I've got this head pressure and I heard you can help people with this. And it, he said, I'm going to kill my, I can't get rid of it. It was a bad way. So when I got a picture of his eyes, it's like, holy man. But I've had him as a lifetime client. <coughs> Sorry, get it stuck <coughs> in the throat. Wait a minute. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> I read somewhere, oh yeah, I got that. But the detox lasted until 6 in the morning. It still does, but less. My question, is there any herb to be used in case of a quick edema, swelling in the throat in response to an allergic reaction? Oh, crap. Yeah, what do they call that? Uh, um, when you have a uh, anaphylactic shock? which I know is, a, is an emergency situation. Well, I think you did the right thing with the lemon juice. I really do. Um, boy, I would, I would be freaked out with that, too, if you got too closed off, because it sounds like, did you eat something that, that is bad, or that you have a... What is that that, that you get when you have an allergic reaction to something? It's not epi, but think about the epi pins for a minute. Where does your body produce epinephrine? The adrenal glands. So anybody that needs an EpiPen is what? Adrenal insufficient, but what else are they? Heavily lymphatic involved, which means heavily immune involved. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, God, I can't think of it right now, guys. Sorry about that. But uh, herbal-wise, I, I would think any lymphatic form it would be uh, anti-swelling. Uh, you use them for snake bites, anything like that. So I would think a combination of kidneys, any lymphatic formula would be superb for that, even though it, it might be even blood, but still, remember the lymph. But I, I would say those would be even your better ones like that. Mm -hmm. Anything for the adrenal glands? You know? Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Return to Shannon. All right. Mr. Sims. I really like this guy. He's uh he realizes the protein in the kidney thing. And he trains body professional bodybuilders. Hello, Dr. M. Could you please do an in-depth video on living with one kidney and adrenal? What? <clears throat> Good question. You know, it's amazing that in kidney transplants or kidney removals that somehow the lymph system gets hooked up or grows back fast, and others know. Now, I think I told you guys about a case where a lady came in, she said she had breast cancer. He did a mastectomy, and now it's back. In the lungs, I think it was. And I am explaining to her, you know, the fact that this is the lymph system, that her, her breasts drain right here in the axillary lymph nodes, and then right here's the kidney. Right there's the kidney, right? And I said it's essential that your kidneys be filtering to be able to move that lymph so that tumor can come out. It's just backed up lymph. She looked at me and she said, they took my right kidney out. 
And I said, they took your right kidney out. She said, yeah. They said it had cancer in it too or something. I can't remember the reason. And I said, did they hook you back up lymphatically? Do you have any swelling? She pulled back and lift up her dress and her, her right leg was this big. Now, she was living in her van. She was a middle to upper class lady at one time. Till the medical doctors got a hold of her. Not only did they end her life, they stole all her money doing it. So she ended up living in her van in McDonald's and Walmart parking lots. And when, she, when I told her that, she looked at me and she said, I'm going to die, aren't I? And I said, I can't tell you, sweetheart. i got to have that kidney. And I didn't see her anymore. <laughs> they probably found her dead in one of the parking lots. So if you know what I'm doing here out of the God worlds, that's one of the reasons. I truly believe in my heart that your protocol will and does work. It will, honey. And your lymph system finds new pathways and everything else. If you don't have any lymphedema from this, thank God. You treat your one kidney like it's a precious little baby just born. You do not give it proteins. You do not give it abrasive chemistries. You don't want to give it dyes and, and, and all kinds of metals and things like that. Pops and sugars and, I mean, com refined sugars. Uh, all of that. Stay away. The worst chemistry on the kidneys and bowels are the proteins. Stay away. No beans, grains, nuts. Stay away from that crap. One kidney, one adrenal gland. I find that quite amazing. Because when you see the bilateral nuts and you see that this kidney's act, right kidney's actually draining the right side of the body. Left kidney's actually draining the left side of the body. How are you accomplishing that with one kidney? And maybe you're not. When I do your iris analysis, I can always tell which kidney isn't filtering over the other one. How? by the lymph system in the eye. When I see a, a, a right kidney that's not filtering over the left, that right side is just lymphatically much more involved. If it's an acute level, it turns a blue eye white, right? So you'll see a little white all, all over the place on the left side, but the right side's thick. You can see the bilateralness of this very, very easy in iridology. It's beautiful. And it helps us to understand things more, why we have two kidneys. But then when you go to the medical profession and you go to dialysis, they've got a big poster there. I wish I have it. Someone brought it to me. I should put it up. You have an extra one. Give one away. You're born with an extra kidney. Give one away. This is the people people trust their lives to. These are the people that walk up and say, go ahead, juice me with chemo. These are the people that go into experimental chemotherapy groups where none comes out. Just clinging on to life. What karma, huh? Boy, I tell you what. If you've got thoughts of being a medical doctor, let me highly recommend you change your concept and become a naturopath, but one that understands naturopathy, pick up chemistry and a little physics, you know, and learn the ways of regeneration of tissue. It's not like we're in some complicated uh, domain here. Planet Earth is not a complicated level. And not by any stretch of the imagination. We haven't even become close to complicated yet. But we're so far out of balance. We haven't learned the spiritual side of life yet. In more of your advanced civilizations, that has been a factor essentially in, in, in the equation. Not in this one yet. However, I have been struggling with it for over five years and have spent thousands of dollars on herbs and consultants only to become discouraged and angry. I live in Michigan, a Michiganer, huh? Uh, had my kidney removed. What? had my kidney removed about 10 to 12 years ago due to kidney cancer, but you can clean the cancer out of kidneys. 
I cur now, I currently am walking with a limp and loss of balance. Okay. Now, is your one leg bigger, that, that, that side the kidney of your leg really swollen or anything like that? Lipedema anywhere? Really need some help getting on complete uh, detox diet. Now, loss of balance. You know, that comes from the cerebellum here. But, you know, when you lose maybe equilibrium in some way that way, really need some help getting on complete detox diet. I have been unable to achieve any significant filtration. Holy shit. Well... You know what? This is where you want to be real careful with lymphatic formulas. When there's only one kidney involved, I only use one lymphatic formula, and I might not use that for a month or two because the diet is very lymphatic, very hydrating, astringent, you know. But boy, I would move my diet up into the fruits, berries, and melons category. It would be so gentle and nice on those kidneys. Even vegetables are a little rough, but <clears throat> they would still be better. You know, and just you know, don't do any proteins, don't do any grains, beans, anything like that. Keep your life simple and pure. Get your adrenals. Work on those. Don't be afraid of herbs. Don't be afraid of any of that. But you've got to get this one kidney filtering or not good. I don't see anything there. So dry fasting is. I know you guys are sending me some good stuff on dry fasting, and we've been looking up stuff. So pretty good stuff. Uh, but I refuse to give up. Do not give up, my dear one. Besides, what are you seeking? You, 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 you want to get an upper circumbrainer nerve. Wouldn't hurt to do lower circulation. That could move blood more aggressively through the kidney itself. Could be very helpful. And also moving blood through the adrenal glands, right? Because remember, blood is 20% of interstitial fluid. At the same time, that blood's going to bring in electro electrical electrolytes. And you're going to start hydration. All right, because you have to start, because most people have what? Malabsorption. Well, if you look at the body as a chemical manufacturing or a chemical processing or simply a food processor, and it's simply breaking down complex chemistry into simple chemistry, digestion is the first, enzymatic action is the first stage, right? What's the second? Absorption. So if you're malabsorbed or greatly malabsorbed, how is the goodies from the herbs and everything helping you? And that's why I have liquids, a lot of liquids to hopefully penetrate that. At the same time, you're bringing hydration to that area. You're bringing hydration into the small intestines and into the colon. That alkaline ash food is a hydrating ash because it's electrolyte rich. It's alkaline rich. So therefore, as you absorb whatever you can, you're going to create an alkaline or a hydrating or an anionic environment. And that begins then everything loosening up. And you notice that with the brooms and everything, we're pulling the mucus out as well. So you're seeing a lot of mucus in your stools. Yeah, baby. That's what's blocking everything. Remember Arnold Eric and the Mucus Diet Healing System. He discovered quite aptly that certain foods causes mucus in the body. Those are predominantly your proteins or foreign foods or foreign chemistry to the human body. Those are generally your complex and your uh, proteins, which are complex foods. Don't spend any more money trying to get well other than herbs for your kidneys and things like that, sweetheart. Um, you'd be one where I would love to see an eyeball. I would love to see the, your eyes and which kidney has gone. And because if you have strong genes, it's hard to tell when they remove something. If you have weak genes, you can go, that's the one. But I'd like to see that. And I'll give you a lot deeper insight. And if I can get you to send a, attach a picture, someone attached a picture here. And, uh, but they're down the way a little way. But that, well, here's a good example. Let's look at that a minute. All right. Let's see. What color eye is this? Obviously blue, but why is there brown in a blue eye? All right. Chronic lymphatic stagnation, and it's right around the pupil, right? Well, what is immediately around the pupil in iridology? Your GI tract. And look at this one going right up into the pituitary, right up into the brain, coming through this transverse colon. Look at the kidney. Thick, chronic. See what I'm saying? Now this white is acute. So they're, they're acutely involved, kind of thick. 
but they're chronically above kidney. Look at the adrenal on top, chronic. This is either hip or uh, ovary or testicle. But look at that chronicness to the bowels there. And that's the neat thing you can see with iridology. You can see we could tear that eye right apart. It looked like it had strong genes to it. Uh, or maybe do you have some place down there in Florida a person could come and stay in a detox? We did have. The lady passed. I don't know what the gentleman's going to do, but we've had a lot of people there, famous people there too. People there, we're regenerating people. Generally, we put the people that uh, are in wheelchairs and stuff like that, that the family has dumped them into court or something like that. We find people like that. They find us and, man, you know, our hearts are going out for sure. But uh, that's the place you need is a place like that. And we want a healing center so bad. You know, because that's what you need is when you get so sick and tired and run down and you're, you're tired of chasing rainbows or, or whatever, you go have a rest and we take care of you. I like that too. Uh, I hope you're able to do an in-depth video talking about what it is like living with one kidney. I don't... I. I I wouldn't be able to do that, honey, because I don't know what it's like to live with one kidney. Why don't you do a video of what it's like living with one kidney and what you found to survive on? I would suggest that you get yourself your health back. We'll help you. I'll help you get your, your health back, get all this out of here. And, uh, and then you do a video on what it's been for you to do this and how you found your remedy. That's why you see people do videos with us, is they've already done the programs. I have not ever had just one kidney. I've had many clients with just one kidney, the stories weren't happy. And I've had many clients with one kidney, the stories were very happy. So you're, you're going to be a story that's very happy because you're coming in the right time to fix things. You know? The in-depth diet is simple. I don't need an in-depth and I don't need to tell you. Eat three grapes, two half slices of bananas. I don't live in that world, baby guys. I, we rock. You grab your own world. I'm a God man. I'm here to help you, but not do it for you. You must do the do. So I don't care. Fruits, berries, and melons. Enjoy it. Pick the ones you like. Don't eat the things you don't like. Enjoy life. Be happy. Smell flowers. Buy flowers. I'm always buying flowers. You know, make yourself happy. Fix your body. Get it alkaline. Make things healthy in the body. Don't make it a bigger deal, sweetheart, than it is, right? You already did it. It's done. Can't change it, right? Even though you learned things about that. Wasn't meant to be. Wasn't meant to be. Don't beat yourself up or you'll pull yourself into acidosis just beating yourself up. Don't need to, honey. Easy to fix yourself. You can fix yourself easy, but you've got to deal with what that kidney dealt with. See, with that kidney bad like that or highly inflamed, you know it wasn't filtering. So that side of your body, lucky you don't have tumors on it. Things like that. I'm dead serious. So you still have to clean that side of the body and, and, and the other side. So you hope that everything's connected or it will connect. It's really risky when you talk about surgeons and connecting the lymph system because they don't understand that system. They're not looking, as far as I know, for lymph vessels. Maybe good surgeons, you have to ask your surgeon, did you hook up my lymph system again? <laughs> good luck on that one. I hope you're, but all I can tell you is that you take your own grit. Get your body healthy. Not difficult. Don't make it a big deal. Just change your diet. Number one, with one kidney. Number one, with any kidneys or without anything, you got to change your diet. You got to go to the diet that's designed for humans, fruits, berries, and melons. The sad thing, we have farmers that do not understand what good food is. In Florida, all these big growers, they don't give a crap about the quality. They want to get it out before the other farmer do, and they have these growth factors that they give to the melons and to get them to grow. Now, taste watermelons. I'm seeing there's not a good watermelon coming out of Florida in one. I mean, it's all about money. And what these good old boys, of course, that have these farms, 
they probably are not fruit berries and melon eaters. Most of those guys are, you know, farm boys and we, you know, farmers, you know what farmers eat. I have a lot of friends with them. I got a lot of friends that are farmers over there. They know exactly what they eat. So fix yourself, sweetheart, and we'll be glad to help you fix yourself. Don't freak out. This equilibrium is interesting to me because it's either coming from your cerebellum, one of the ears, and it could be that that side, you're so backed up into the ear canal and that, you know, that you're having that equilibrium. Sounds stupid, but I would candle my ears three or four candles per ear. And one lad did that for me, and man, his sinuses just started draining, and I'm going, choo, choo, choo. Now, not everybody gets that, but don't you wish. Drain the ears, sign a strain, smell again. Oh my God, your eyes clear up. Is IVEDTA therapy okay? Don, no. I don't mess with blood whatsoever for any, any chelation, any type of therapy whatsoever, and especially vitamin C. My God. The stories coming back from that are nightmares, guys. Got to be... It, it seems like man either goes too far one way or too far the other way. It seems it's having a hard time man meeting man and woman. It seems it has a hard time getting in the middle and getting balanced. Let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. Who said that? Exactly. And isn't that the oath that medical doctors take is the hypocrite? I, I mean the, uh, yeah. Hi, I have been diagnosed with breast cancer stage two. I hope you've got a hold of us before I've got a hold of this. Holy crap. Stage two in some of limps. Lip nodes probably, right? The National Health Sciences are pushing for mastectomy. I am trying to do tamoxifen for a few months to shrink the lump whilst doing the grape, melon, and berry fast. What herb do you suggest? Thanks, Colleen. I suggest you get off of the, again, free speech, right? I can only say if it was me, the tamoxifen is considered by the World Health Organization as carcinogenic. Just to let you know. American medical doctors, I can tell you probably live in America, American medical doctors don't give a hoot. It's a carcinogen, who cares? So is chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is a carcinogen. Come on. Anything that destroys cells are carcinogens or damages and mutates cells are carcinogens. That's what we're talking about here. What are we doing to the cell structure function of the human body? What kind of chemistry are we blowing back to them? It's not about, oh, what I tasted, it tastes so good. What is that chemistry you're consuming doing to the cells that are my structure function of the human body? So, you did the right thing by going on the, on the grapes and stuff like that. I would rethink the tamoxifen because suppressing estrogen has nothing to do with this. This is a lymphatic problem. And that's the system you have to go over because you have what? Can I hear it? Lymph node involvement. Wait a minute. What's the word again? Lymph node involvement. So you have lymph involvement. It's your lymph system. The lymph system uses the kidneys and the skin to eliminate from. So you've got to see stuff coming out. When it doesn't come out, you get kidney cancer and you get psoriasis, eczema, and all the crap on the skin because you're destroying your skin. Everything is subcutaneous, just chewing. So that's the point here is you want to go after your kidneys, get a filter, dry fasting, go after it. Your stage two, I consider all stages serious. Dig in and go. Do not let them biopsy. Oh, I bet you already have it. Is there a metal clip there? You know, somebody needs to sue them for that. No one told them to put a metal clip in, in anybody. Make sure your ladies don't get the metal clips. And why a biopsy? Who cares? If you've got a tumor, get it out. Assume that it has some cancer cells in it. Assume it. But don't let them touch it. When they open that up, notice what happens? It was kind of going along, going along, and now that they biopsied it, BAM! 
Notice, everything starts accelerating to hell, Bill. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. These guys don't know what they're doing. They're children in, in a very serious playground. So be careful what you do. Why not a lumpectomy? You haven't given me hardly any information though. what's the size of it, da-da-da-da-da, and all that kind of stuff, you know, but all I can say, I don't know the size of what you're dealing with to give you any naturopathic advice, stuff like that, but I'm always for fixing the system that's down. And you see, this tumor can't come out until the lymph nodes are cleaned. The lymph nodes can't come clean until your kidneys start filtering. See, the kidneys connected to the lymph vessels, the lymph vessels connected to the lymph nodes, the lymph nodes then connected to the other lymph vessels which are connected to the cells. That's like the thigh bone connected to the hip bone. I had a quick question. If I had a couple of tattoos, does that make it impossible for me to have full detox? No, not at all. Or what kind of negative effects do tattoos have? Well, if you have a few, not so much. Remember I talked about the, the lady with the full body tattoo? Jesus, guys. Yeah. Huh. I wish I wish I could put some of these cases live here for you to see them because you guys would be going like that. Flashes of light. Flashes. Constantly. I, I, I can't even tell you. Whew. Whew. Okay. Just be careful. Toxins are toxins. Ink is toxic. So just be careful, you know. Hi, Dr. Robert Moss. First, I have to say that you are amazing. Oh, thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Appreciate that. Thank you for giving me hope for healing my husband and for knowledge. Please, I hope I give you all hope. Nobody has to sit there and die. I mean, there's, there's advanced. Some of you guys are advanced, no question. If you're so advanced, it's hard to get. Start becoming God-absorbed. Start, start becoming awake. Stop thinking and, start, and stop just being in the now. And just trying to absorb into all, all things. Just let yourself just go and relax. And you, you'll have your visitors, you'll have your friends to come help you. Because you have to realize passing is not negative. You're just stepping out of one body, entering another one. And you already have more with you. So mostly you step from this body to your astral, your next body. That's all that it is. You're not like being tortured and ran into hell. Now your karma is going to rule your next experience. You create, you remember, you reap what you sow. Jesus said that. Buddha said it real quickly. Karma. So what you put out, you get back. Remember, cause and effect. And we have to, <laughs> man, I'm getting a lot out. We have to learn that in our health sciences. It's cause and effect. Not diseases, it's cause and effect. And chemistry is cause and effect worlds, right? If my mom was still physically here, she would be so happy to know that we think on a higher level. Your mom must have been a great soul, huh? <laughs> Ooh, that got me. I have two things to say or ask. First, my husband has uh, cirrhosis, stage 4 liver failure. Oh, wow. 29 years old. What? 29 years old? Yeah. Big time genetic weaknesses, right? All right, so what's the first thing you got to do? First thing you got to do in cirrhosis of the liver, cancer of the liver, who cares what level, it's all the same stuff, man. By the time you're in cirrhosis, your, your liver's getting chewed up, right? So how do you get relief? First, you're going after that GI tract. You're not going to do a liver flush. Uh-uh, <laughs> uh-uh. You do not do liver flushes or anything like that with, with cirrhosis or advanced liver deterioration. Uh-uh. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. What you want to do is be gentle, be loving, right? You can use a liver gallbladder formula, no problem, absolutely. But what do you want to get? What's chewing up the liver? We're back to the wall again. What's chewing up the liver? Acids or base? Alkalines. Acids or base? Oh, you guys again. 
right? So what system are you going to hunk on? You're going to hunk on that lymph system, aren't we? You could do some castor oil packs. I wouldn't even. I don't know if I'd use castor oil. You could use castor oil, big anti-inflammatory, but great seed oil, not only anti-inflammatory, but nutritive. So, I mean, you could use some oils like that and do a little bit of a, a, uh, a compress over the liver there, just a little bit to get some remedy there. But you want to make sure that diet is pure, pure, pure. No proteins going down that mouth. Uh, not good, not good uh, turnout on that one. So, you really want to get into the fruits and the berries and the melons, but I would stay away from the acid fruits. I would stay a little more balanced. Matter of fact, this one, you might, might, might add a green drink a day on this one. You know, you can do that. Not too much because you don't want to stress the liver. You don't. You know, you're looking at the simplest food creates the less stress, right? In, in any, any tissue in the human body. And so your fruits and your berries are your least complex of the foods, particularly the fruits. And that's what you're trying to do. They're nutritive, energetic, and less complex for the body to deal with. But of course that's what you want to go for. You're electrifying, you're hydrating, you're bringing in alkaline chemistry. I wouldn't fast them. You want to bring in some chemistry, some, some energetic chemistry to this person. I wouldn't touch the lymph system right now. I wouldn't touch it with a lymph formula. All the lymphatic formulas are hard on the liver. These are tough herbs. The, the, the one through four, not so much. But number five, tough on the liver. Poke root, blood root. We all will admit it. But it's also one of the finest tumor busters on the planet. So one outweighs the other. Uh, but that's, what you, that, that's how you're doing 29 years old, absolutely. And go after those adrenal glands. Licorice. He's got to have, he might have high blood pressure right now, but could have very low too. So use the licorice root. It is a good anti-inflammatory and it's great to bring up the blood pressure. But what bringing up the blood pressure means is bringing up neurotransmitters and hopefully steroids. You want to bring up the pull of steroids, anti-inflammatories. Anyone will do. Progesterone, pregnisone. I mean pregnisone. <laughs> Cortisol, any of those. Natural alkaline anti-inflammatory steroids. The body can use them. The concern is the liver getting fatty with that with, with lipids because it's fighting acidosis. You know, that's why you see your fatty anything. Fatty livers, fatty kidneys, fatty whatever. You know, it's just the body trying to stop acidosis. And when you realize that and you go back and you work on the kidneys, you get yourself filtering and you get this cell, this system hydrated, then all that backs down. Everybody backs down. Like the swell, everybody backs down. But you've got to get it out. And that's you're trying to find tools to help us when it does swell like that. Well, the lymphatic formula is the best thing I can tell you for that. And we need a little help with liver regeneration, I would think so. 29 years young. Oh my God. Got to save the hubby. There's no, there's no, you're not going to let him go into liver failure. It's not difficult. You turn it around. It might take him a little while because cirrhosis is pretty advanced. So, but just hang in there. Let the liver, the liver is a, an incredible regenerative organ. It'll regenerate when you beat it, throw it down and drive over it with a car. It'll still regenerate. So, I mean, you know, it just needs the right soothing chemistry. Grapes, 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 apples, apples, apples. Red Delicious, by the way. Now, his sister, 39 years old, says she can't eat fruit to get the tumor out because she has diabetes. Well, I respond one of two ways. First of all, you got to bring her up to speed on blood sugars and sugars in food, right? And so to understand that, and you can let her listen to this if you want, but there, we've done it and talked about this so many times. And I'm going to go to this again. Mother's milk. Number one ingredient is carbohydrates. Sugar. That's your sugars. Number one ingredient of mother's milk is your sugars. Why? Sugars are what in chemistry? 
carbon predominantly. Everything has a hydrogen element to it almost, but you've got your carbon chains. Your carbon chains, as mentioned earlier, is for energy. The key component of life is energy, I have to tell you, not protein, not structure. So the second component, which is half that, is your lipid, your lymphatic system. Then you're down to your carriers and maybe some bodybuilding. Minimal. So your sister has to learn that she's listening to bullcrap and propaganda. Type 1. All right. What they call type 1, basically, is the islands of Lagerhans, the beta cells in the pancreas, no longer giving the insulin that is needed for glucose or above. Now, what's interesting about that is glucose is a simple sugar. It is this predominant simple sugar of vegetables, where fructose is the obvious predominant simple sugar of fruit. Different chemical makeups, different food, different simple sugars. Hello! Remember, fruit tastes sweet, like water feels wet, but water is still just two atoms of hydrogen and one of oxygen. Something like that is so wet and the universal solvent, the divine. Amazing. So, type 1, your body doesn't use insulin for fructose. That's the superiority of it. So, it goes right to a cell. So, if you're a type 1, it only takes a short period of time and your blood sugars will actually go down and balance out. Type 2 is the adrenals. That's sugar metabolism problems and you don't matter what sugar you have. You want to avoid the complexes, but you can't avoid the simple or you kill yourself. You do not avoid simple sugars or you get ketosis and acidosis and death will be yours. So, wrong way of thinking. So, sugars, the simple sugars, will keep the blood sugar bump to a minimum and you carry on and fix the gland, the adrenal glands. Yep, these are fixable items, guys. Easy to fix the adrenals and blood sugars. Type 2, that's about the easiest you got out there. And I might add, if you're a type 2, you also have what weakness? What does the adrenal gland sit on top? Kidneys. And so if you have kidneys, what do you have? The lymphatic system, the great sewer system of the human body. That's how vital understanding all this is for man to continue if he wants his species to continue. Understand things a little more. And she has to get her head space or enjoy your tumor and what follows. Enjoy your tumor and what follows. And it's nothing but pure hell. If you think taking a little juice like chemotherapy is nothing, Go have some. Go have a, a nice little dose for lunch. See how you feel. You know, you have to realize there's some souls that can't get with opening their awareness. They just are so locked. They trust without awareness. And it's been the death of many, many, many people. So all I can say is I hope your sister are going to listen to you. All right, let's do one more. And this is from Germany. Question from Germany. I am 23 years old or young. Look at all the young people, guys. Look at all the young people with all the problems. I've been telling you this. I've been saying this for probably 35 years. When I started realizing what's going on, I'm going, oh, my God. All right, I had a hair transplant. <laughs> I had a hair transplant like um, Chris. I had a hair transplant in December 2015, but my hair is still going away the same way before it. I have hair loss since I was 18. All the male people in my family are balding at 20s <laughs> and dementia at 50s. I mean, and Alzheimer's at 50s and 60s. I mean, this is the thing you got to worry about. When you see bald heads, what's the next thing? What's in that air compartment up there? the central nervous system. Uh, so, 
you know, Alzheimer's, dementia, memory loss, all kinds of things can occur when you start losing hair. Why? Because it's, it's the lymph system. It's acidosis and it's affecting the whole brain. It isn't just here, here. You might see patches leave at first like that, but the whole brain is eventually involved. So this is very, very important. I can't speak to it enough that you guys get your hair back. And to get your hair back, you got to get in the head and drain the head. You got to get that lymph moving and blood moving. Lymph moving out and blood moving in. Upper circuit brain and nerve, and then go after the lymph system. Go after your bowels, go after your kidneys, get your kidneys filtering, because you guys are the ones that have to teach this world. You're suffering so much, it's making you find the truth, and that'll help this planet out in the long run. I am getting frustrated over it. I want my hair back. See, that's a, this is the fallacy in things of hair transplant. You're putting them back in the same medium. You're putting them back in the same acidic minstrel. And you're going to lose it again. You've done nothing to fix why. See, nobody says, you guys have that missing piece, though. Remember that. You guys have the missing piece in this huge jigsaw puzzle of health. With that, you can understand why the hair goes and why all these things go. But if you don't have that missing piece, I can see why there's so much stupidity. Why am I losing hair? Well, I don't know. See what I'm saying? Without the understanding of the lymphatic system and what it does for you and how it works, I don't see how there is a physician that can help you. I am getting, okay, uh, I want my hair back. I bought your tinctures. Upper circulation, lymph node support one, kidneys and bladder one, lymphatic system one. I need your help how to regrow my hair. Kind regards, doctor. Oh, Raphael from Germany. All right, so the thing is, don't get upset. It'll take you a little time. Start, you work on the bowels. you got to get your bowel formulas, get your GI brooms, start cleaning. Cleaning, get your kidneys filtering, right? Make sure they're filtering. You know what that means. See the, see all the filtration in the urine. See all that white stuff and all that in the urine, right? So get your kidneys filtering. Vital, vital, vital. You know? Oh, this is the better one. Remember this. Get, make sure your urine has a lot of sediment in it. We want sediment. We want sediment, right? Now, with the upper circuit brain and nerve, you're helping yourself in a lot of other ways a lot of people don't realize but you're helping yourself in your uh, cognizance in your ability to comprehend uh, just in everything you can imagine you're helping yourself now this sits up here what's it on top of the GI tract so you got to clean up the GI tract get malabsorption cleaned up get the liver cleaned up everybody cleans up down here your kidneys filtering bowels cleaned up everything turned on you'll start getting hair growth all over the place. You can actually stimulate hair growth with upper circulation, but you also want to get why out of there because what it means to you and where it leads you. And you don't want to go, I'm only 30 years old and I can't remember where I parked the car. Oh, you came in a truck? Oh, see what I'm saying? You don't want that, guys. Uh -uh. Because this world will take advantage of you even more. That's the problem. You lose your ability to defend yourself. This world is just full of vultures. Full of vultures taking your money, taking your awareness, taking everything. It's a marketplace, as Jesus said. And you have to be aware of that. I love you guys. Thanks so much for listening to an old man. <laughs> but uh, I wish you all well on your journeys. I'm here always for you. I will always be here for you. Always. So if you need anything, I'm always here for you. You always have to look and just close your eyes and look within. We're always here to help you guys. And I love you so much. You're doing such a great job on yourselves. Don't get frustrated. Nothing's perfect. Some is time, time involved. But the focus is proper and correct and true. So I love you guys. To the next. Namaste. May the blessings be.